Good morning. I'd like to thank the organizers for this opportunity to speak with you and to um, uh, convey to you our vision for integration and application of ENCODE data in differentiating blood cells. The, uh, uh, the vision is actually a project. The project uh, name comes from Validated Systematic Integration of Epigenomics Data in Hematopoiesis. Our motivation is that there are large numbers of data sets from ENCODE, other consortia, uh, uh, lots of individual labs that are available to researchers, but it's difficult for them to effectively incorporate the, that information into their research. Our vision project aims to integrate these heterogeneous data sets systematically and produce uh, useful resources for the broader community. I'll be focusing in mostly on these candidate regulatory elements. The work I'll be describing is led by Cheryl Keller and Guanzhu Shang in, in my group, and we had a um, part of this work was published uh, earlier this year in genome research. So this uh, uh, project, which is funded by NIDDK, uh, consists of multiple laboratories around the world, and we're uh, uh, working to acquire epigenetic information either through our own experiments or by uh, uh, mining the work from other laboratories or consortia, including ENCODE, uh, integrate that information uh, to predict uh, regulatory elements and to give you a, a painting of the regulatory landscape and turn that integrative information into predictive models for gene regulation to uh, uh, predict how each regulatory element is impacting target genes, then test those uh, predictions by genome editing, evaluate the results and try to improve our, our modeling. And we're doing this both in human and in mouse. And uh, here's uh, uh, an example of the, the, the systems we're working with. This is a mouse hematopoiesis. Um, uh, the uh, hematopoiesis is the production of all the blood cells that you have circulating in, in, in your blood. And these are all very different from each other, very different um, abundances, very different functions. They all come from a common hematopoietic stem cell that during differentiation progresses, progressively decreases its potentiality through various progenitors and, and then uh, along each lineage you have an expansion and maturation going on. So we're looking both at the mature cells and these uh, uh, progenitors using data from our own laboratories, data from Ido Amit's lab, from ENCODE and others, and trying to fill in this matrix of histone modifications, nucleus accessibility, uh, of structural protein CTCF, as well as RNA-seq. We uh, don't have a full matrix, but the uh, missing data can be handled reasonably well by our integrative system, which comes from Dr. Yu Chang, who uh, developed this when he was on our statistics faculty at Penn State. This is a, a two-dimensional segmentation uh, that's done by a system called Integrative and Discriminative Epigenome Annotation System. And the object is to assign each uh, genomic interval to an epigenetic state that itself is a, a unique and commonly occurring combination of uh, epigenetic signals, such as histone modifications, nuclease accessibility, and so forth. What is powerful about IDEAS is it does uh, the segmentation jointly, uh, learning both along the genome and across cell types. And this preserves position-specific information and gives you greater precision in finding cell type-specific events. It is a, a it treats the, the data as a quantitative variable rather than a binary one and can handle missing data in an elegant way that's uh, uh, explored in this uh, paper from uh, Shang and Mahoney. And this is our most recent uh, uh, package that uh, uh, you can access via that bioarchive article. Now, <clears throat> when you apply, to take all of that epigenetic data that I showed in the, the data matrix and put it through ideas, Ideas learns that there are about 27 states, and those states are characterized 
uh, by particular combinations of, of uh, uh, features, again, nucleus accessibility, the various uh, uh, histone modifications, not only the combinations, but also the, the, the amount of contribution that, that each of these makes to the, um, to, to the output. And you can see uh, several flavors of promoters, flavors of enhancers, different uh, uh, repressive regions, different transcribed regions. And when you then assign those states to each DNA interval across all of these blood cell types, the progenitors, the erythroid cells, the um, <clears throat> lymphoid cells, you get a very informative painting of the epigenetic landscape. You can easily see uh, broadly expressed genes with their common epigenetic profiles across cell types. You can see more lineage specific uh, genes with patterns of uh, active regions of which we associate with promoters or enhancers, these orange uh, colors for enhancers uh, restricted to uh, a particular cell types. And in fact, you can see that not these epigenetic state assignments are supported by orthogonal data, such as uh, a coactivator binding, which was not part of our, our training, uh, but you see it, it uh, binding around these predicted enhancers. And it actually, uh, independently, uh, uh, the, the, these regions have been examined for activity in transgenic mice, and they, and they actually are active. So that's actually looking pretty, uh, pretty uh, good. And, uh, and, and we're utilizing the, the, these, uh, this epigenetic painting, the segmentation in many, many ways. Uh, the thing I want to focus on now is not just the entire genome, not, not the entire genome, but rather let's make some discrete calls for uh, likely regulatory elements, candidates as regulatory elements. And with this integrative modeling, it's a fairly straightforward uh, procedure. We find all of the uh, peaks called by chromatin accessibility, attack seek or DNA seek, and then we just uh, ensure that those peaks are not solely in quiescent regions uh, of, 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 the, of the genome, and then we've got our CCRE calls. And we also know what the epigenetic state of each of these elements is across the cell types. excuse me, <clears throat> and both in mouse and in human blood cell types, we get slightly over 200,000 of these uh, elements. And you can see kind of similar patterns in mouse and in human for the same locus that we were just looking at, a, a, a substantial ac uh, accumulation of these elements, both within and between the genes. Uh, looking uh, more broadly, we ask what, uh, how does our collection of uh, vision CCREs, um, uh, how does it compare with earlier um, catalogs of, of uh, uh, blood cell enhancers? And how does it compare with the larger <clears throat> collection of uh, CCREs uh, from, from the ENCODE, the, the, the phase three ENCODE, which of course has many more elements because it's looking at many more cell types. And the, uh, the overlaps that you can see in this upset plot <clears throat> are actually uh, pretty supportive, I think. Uh, that There are about 60,000 CCREs that are found in, in almost all of these uh, uh, collections. So you should feel th these are very strongly supported. <clears throat> of the uh, uh, elements that uh, of the other elements in vision, a whole lot of them are also match up with um, uh, the data that, that are in the uh, larger ENCODE uh, uh, collection. So uh, it's uh, almost 60,000 of them there. <clears throat> I apologize for my, uh, my voice here. And, uh, <clears throat> and as I mentioned before, that you, you expect there to be a lot of uh, uh, elements that, that are found by ENCODE that because they're examining way beyond uh, blood cell types and what they're uh, looking at. One of the several things that we've been doing with these epigenetic states is to use them as an input to try to get at a, uh, an, an estimate of the regulatory potential 
the regulatory potential based on the epigenetic signatures, where that potential is, what's the impact of each uh, element on a target gene? And our uh, first approach to this was a classic multivariate regression uh, analysis where uh, what we want to do is to explain expression levels of uh, the different expression levels of genes across cell types. There's gene A and gene B. We know or we've already made calls for the where the regulatory elements are and we know what the profile of epigenetic states are uh, in, in each of these uh, uh, cell types. So we try to ask then uh, how well do these um, uh, uh, states explain uh, the uh, expression. And we look separately at proximal and distal. We uh, convert this categorical variable into a continuous one just by uh, letting our, our X be the proportion of the pooled CCREs that are covered by each of the states. It's a f fairly simple uh, methodology there. And then uh, the multi the multivariate regression, then we'll uh, learn estimated values for these betas, the, 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 the coefficients. So now instead of just having a, a, a color assignment for each state, we can assign it a number that's based on whether it's having a negative or positive impact on the uh, expression of particular genes. And that's what we call our ERP score, which is actually the weighted sum of the coefficients for, for each uh, a state for each of these CCREs. <clears throat> and, and this is calculated for each gene and, and in each cell type. And, and this is available at our, our website. Uh, and we're starting to, to, to try to dig into this. And let me just show you one example, one of the uh, uh, genes that, that, that we like to, to focus on. Uh, ALAS2 is a clinically imported erythroid-induced gene. It encodes the enzyme that catalyzes the rate-limiting step in uh, heme biosynthesis. Erythroid cells need to make lots of heme to bind up with lots of globin to make lots of hemoglobin and be a nice red blood cell. You can see from the RNA-seq results here across this maturation series is uh, differentiation and maturation series. You go from almost no RNA-seq signal to a really, really high signal. And you can see within these introns, very strong uh, chromatin accessibility, which has been noticed before. Our lab has studied them. Many other labs have, have, have studied these and, and showing, for instance, that reporter gene expression is greatly enhanced by, by these uh, intervals. And importantly, uh, uh, it, it, there are uh, so some families with uh, X-linked sideroblastic anemia or show mutations in, in this uh, element. So it's, it's clinically important. What if we look a little more broadly though. We were just focusing in on ALAS2 before in our previous studies. Well, looking within the TAD, this is the, these are the, 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 the uh, TAD boundaries for the uh, region including ALAS2, you see a lot of places where there are epigenetic signatures, states that seem to be uh, associated with, with, the, with the gene activation. So maybe there are some of these are, uh, are, are distal regulators. And we were particularly, interest, particularly interested in the ones that had uh, uh, binding by known erythroid uh, uh, transcription factors like uh, GATA1, TAL1, and, and so forth. So, uh, and, and here's the, the ERP scores that we were getting across this. You see, there's a lot of positives. These are the, 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 the known ones, there are sevens, and some of these are much larger ERP scores. So we wanted to uh, test these uh, out, and we focused in, well, we utilized this R2 and R3, the intronic ones, as uh, uh, positive controls. And we, um, uh, I want to look at this R4, which is a more distal element. And April Coburn in my lab has been conducting um, uh, directed mutations of these elements using uh, uh, CRISPR-Cas9 and uh, trying to target the uh, guide RNAs to, to, to hit around these uh, uh, conserved GATA1 motifs. And sure enough, when the deletion goes into those motifs, you can uh, see a substantial reduction. So that's a good 
positive control and it actually confirms that, that, that this has an a, a element has an effect on AL, ALAS2. Similarly, this R3, which has not has been studied as much, but uh, her uh, mutagenesis is uh, uh, hitting these GATA sites uh, uh, pretty frequently, and, and we see uh, re reductions. So this is all looking good. The more distal element, we have more limited uh, data on, but uh, and this is very recent, and we're still working on this, but you can see mutations in this element generating uh, substantial losses in activity. And we're following up on that, but uh, it's, it's very, very promising. So I hope I've convinced you that uh, integration of these epigenetic sig signals to, to get a regulatory landscape is useful. You can combine that with uh, accessibility to come up with um, a good set of uh, uh, candidate regulatory elements. Um, converting states to numbers by these regression models is actually uh, uh, has a lot of potential and, and it's very promising. We're very uh, happy with our initial investigations of uh, uh, these uh, experimental evaluations. Our resources are at this website. I wanna thank the members of my own laboratory, other labs at Penn State and, and other members of the, the Vision Consortium for working with us. And, and of course, I'm very grateful for our funding and I'm grateful for your attention. I'll be happy to take any questions.